So take me through the process of extracting DNA from a mammoth. It's actually quite surprising. It's not so unlike what you would do with your own hair. So first we wash it, we rinse it with water, we shampoo it, and in the end we even bleach it. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, we use an enzyme to digest the hair shaft and we release the mammoth DNA that's stored on the inside. Genetics labs commonly use bone as a source of ancient DNA. But frequently contaminated, mammoth bones often provide little usable DNA. Just as use of mammoth hair provides a surprisingly pure sample. In one instance, we were working on an uh, individual that was 18,000 years old and we could get more than 90% of mammoth DNA from it. And the oldest specimen that we sequenced was roughly 60,000 years old, and there we still get more than 50% that is uh, endogenous mammoth DNA. Genetic analysis has dispelled a myth about the very source from whence this DNA comes, mammoth hair. Mammoths have traditionally been depicted as having orange-brown hair. It's now known that they possessed similar genes to humans for hair coloration. Theoretically, they could have been blonde, ginger, or brunette. But because Kevin had the mammoth instruction manual in the form of their decoded DNA, he was able to compare their code for making haemoglobin with that of their close relatives, modern elephants there were only four differences between the codes. This enabled Kevin to use host bacteria to produce his very own protein based on modified elephant DNA. And effectively, we turned it into mammoth DNA, functional mammoth DNA. A functional protein that has been extinct for thousands of years. For thousands of years. A functional protein that hasn't yeah. existed in any animal. Yeah. For thousands of years. That's, and, that's amazing. And, it's starting and, to sound a little bit like Jurassic Park. And, and it's not even just functional, it's authentic. This is, in, in essence, virtual time travel. The end product is precisely the same. Had I gone back in time and taken a blood sample, it is absolutely authentic. That's absolutely remarkable. And, and once you've got the mammoth haemoglobin, then you can test it, you can see how it does. These new molecular level investigations are bringing the science fiction style possibility of cloning a mammoth ever closer. In the far east of Siberia, an incredible new discovery is being heralded as the holy grail of mammoth science. In the city of Yakutsk, members of the International Mammoth Committee have unearthed a completely intact frozen mammoth thigh bone. Although thousands of years old, it's one of the best preserved bone specimens retrieved from the permafrost. So perfectly frozen that it contains pure mammoth bone marrow. This could be the best source ever of fully intact mammoth cells with undamaged DNA. Hola. Hola. The marrow will be sent to a lab in Japan where they will try to extract intact cell nuclei and insert them into a host elephant egg. If successful, scientists there predict that they will be able to clone a mammoth by using a female elephant as a surrogate mother within five years. of creating such a clone is likely to kick up a storm of debate. Should scientists even be attempting to resurrect an extinct species? Rather than trying to clone a long dead species, many scientists are far more eager to understand why the mammoths died out in the first place.